Giles Jai Ungpakorn is an associate professor in the Faculty of Political Science at Chula Longkorn University in Thailand. He's also a member of the Thai socialist group Turn Left. Giles has recently been accused of lese majesté, charges arising from his sold-out book, A Coup for the Rich, published in 2007. Those found guilty of lese majesté face a prison sentence of 15 years. Giles joins us from Bangkok. Thanks for joining us, Giles. You're welcome. So, Giles, as I understand it, you came back from England recently, and, and awaiting for you was a summons, I guess, to go to a police station. And you've been charged with lese majesté, insulting the king, which, uh, so you're potentially facing jail time. So, first of all, why have they charged you, and are you at all concerned about what you can say in this interview? Well, um, I'm not concerned about what I can say in this interview because I think that the way to fight the Les Majesty charges is an open political campaign. And this is because the, at the moment the Thai government, the Ministry of Justice, is trying to um, tell the media, especially in Thailand, not to cover any of the cases. So we're in a situation where a lot of people are facing court cases. Many people are in jail. There are estimated to be about 100 people in jail. And these people, it's basically a secret trial and, um, and people are, are, are jailed and then forgotten about. And, now, the, Thai, and the, Thai media case, play, the Thai media plays along with this? Unfortunately, the Thai media is playing along with this, yes. The only people that have been really reporting these cases are the foreign media. And I understand that the Thai military owns some TV stations themselves, uh, but why are, is, there, is there no independent television there? Well, unfortunately, the independent television has all but disappeared. The free media has all but disappeared. We only have really um, independent um, uh, media in the Internet, which are run by um, volunteers and so on. Um, there's a lot of self-censorship being practiced in, in the Thai media. So this is one of the big problems and we need to actually campaign to, to get um, the whole thing looked at and to, to have some transparency in these court cases. So g give us the context for this. Uh, from, a, from an outside Western point of view, we saw demonstrators at the airport it seemed like a kind of democratic opposition to the regime. The government fell, a new government came into power. Uh, but what's the reality of this politics? Well, in 2006, um, there were a number of protests against an, uh, an elected government. In fact, the government had overwhelming support from the poor because it had pro-poor policies like um, universal health care and so on. Um, and this triggered a military coup in September 2006. And the military had been trying to change the rules in, in the democratic process. They, re they tore up the old constitution, they redrafted their own version, which decreased the democratic space. Half the um, senators were appointed. And then they used the courts, which are on the side of the military, to wage a war of attrition on the government party which had been overthrown. And um, one year after the coup, another election was held, but the old government still won a large majority. So the protesters that we saw at the airport, closing down the airport, they um, tried to trigger a crisis, and, and they did. And then this led to a lot of pressure um, including from the court dissolving the part the government party again and we now have a, a party led by politicians who would never have um, won overall majorities and it is this government which is backed by the military and the PAD demonstrators who closed down the airport that are now in in power Incidentally, the PAD, although they call themselves the People's Alliance for Democracy, um, have very much fascist tendencies. They um, wear royal uh, yellow shirts. They talk about the need to um, respect nation, religion and king, which are the uh, slogans of the extreme right. 
So, so are we looking here at, at, a, at a fight between two sections of the elite? Uh, are we looking at a fight between a section of the elite that's more right and one that's more centrist? Or are we looking at a fight between the elite and a party which is somewhat more populist? We're looking at a fight between the um, conservative elites, which include the PAD, the army, the Democrat party, and so on, and um, a populist party, which was run by a rich businessman, but had huge support from the poor. And it's complicated by the fact that the poor have now started to organize themselves by wearing red shirts in contrast to the PAD's yellow shirts. And they, they actually want to, to see a government of their choice, not one which is foisted on them by the military. So, so this sort of this portrayal of the uh, actions at the airport and the demonstrations represents actually a right-wing movement, if I understand correctly. Then, absolutely yes, and it's this right-wing climate that has resulted in an increase in the number of les majesty cases and so on. And has has the king then made it rather clear that he sides with uh, this new this new yellow-shirted government? a new sh yellow shirted movement and is the military on their side as well? Well, you see, the, the issue here is that it's very unclear what the king's position is. Um, the military coup in 2006 claimed legitimacy from the king and yet um, the king has never really come out and said anything in a clear statement. And it's my view that actually the people that are using Les Majesty are claiming to do things in the name of the king, are actually using these, these laws, these Dacronian laws, in order to shut um, and silence the people who are against the military coup or who want democracy. There's a long history in Thailand of Les Majesty being used um, against political opponents of, of various groups. Does the king have to approve the use of the charges or the government of the day can do this on their own? Well, it's a terrible law in the sense that any private citizen can initiate charges. It, it never comes from the palace and it hardly ever comes from the, from the government. So any um, right-wing crackpot can initiate the charges and then the police have to investigate. But it seems to me at the moment that um, the climate is such that the military seem to be leaning on the police to actually take up um, any complaints and, and push them towards court cases. Now, why have they come after you? Well, just after the coup, I wrote a book called A Coup for the Rich. And um, in this book, I argued that the coup was completely illegitimate and that the army had used the um, monarchy in order to justify their coup d'etat. I argued that um, the people supporting the coup were completely undemocratic and that they um, had contempt for the poor. And if you actually look at the people who supported the coup, which includes the PAD and, and the army and, and the Democrat politicians, um, they actually believe that the, the vast majority of the Thai electorate don't deserve the right to vote. And what they're trying to do is to tinker with the constitution to try and decrease the, the impact of the popular vote. Um, so that's, it was unavoidable, unavoidable to actually discuss the role of the monarchy. And I asked a, a number of questions. For example, you know, should the monarchy in a um, constitutional um, monarchy system defend the constitution and democracy against military coups. I wanted transparency so that we could actually see whether the king was behind the coup d'etat or whether the military were actually claiming that. It's my belief that, that this myth has been created in Thailand of the immense power of the king in order to frighten dissidents. The, uh, but certainly the king could have said something if he wanted to. to. To what extent is the king independent from the military? I personally believe that the king is very weak. I believe that the king um, 
actually has been around and quite, is quite comfortable with military dictatorships. You're right in saying that the king could easily have come out and chastised the military for staging a coup, and he chose not to. But he didn't. Um, I don't, I'm not particularly convinced that he actually planned the coup, but a lot of Thai people do think that, and that's actually causing a potential crisis for for the monarchy because. Millions of people are very unhappy with the coup and what's been going on since. Well, in, in the next segment of our interview, let, let, let's discuss the, a little bit of the historical context. Thailand, as I understand it, was one of the first countries to have the kind of IMF-style neoliberal economics, and that the disparity between rich and poor in Thailand is, is quite extreme. Uh, so let's, let's try to get a broader picture uh, of Thailand in which these events are taking place. So please join us uh, for the second part of our interview with Giles Jai Ungpakorn. Mm -hmm.